you. As pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, and on behalf of the deacons and officers and members of this church, I want to welcome all of you to this great house of God. So grateful to my dear sister and our leader who spoke this morning with the fire of a prophet, the Reverend Dr. Bernice King. Pastor Sam Collier and Reverend Natasha Reed. To our amazing mayor who with head and heart is doing the work. Let's hear it for our mayor, Mayor Andre Dickens. He's doing the work and he's as clean as the Board of Health. Look at this, bro. Bishop, pastors, preachers, and teachers, sisters and brothers, members of the beloved community, nestled in the middle of Hebrews chapter 11, there can be found what might rightly be regarded as the hall of faith. If you haven't, you ought to visit it. It's a great hall. Abraham is there. Isaac and Jacob are there. Joseph, the great dreamer, is there. Moses, liberator and lawgiver, is there. The people who dared to go with him across the Red Sea are there. Rahab, the prostitute, is in the hall of faith. According to the text, unnamed women and unnumbered martyrs are all there in this great hall of faith. The very next chapter calls them a great cloud of witnesses. And curiously enough, the resume and moral curriculum vita of each distinguished inductee begins with the same two words. The plaque reads as follows, by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he received as an inheritance by faith Amen. Moses left Egypt Amen. you ought to read Hebrews chapter 11 you ought to walk down the corridors of the great hall of faith and see the names of the inductees that are on the wall it's an impressive list I like the list but I don't really know who composed the list We don't really know who met. We don't know who decided who should be on the list and who wouldn't quite make it on the list. But if I could get a seat at the canonical table, if I could get an audience with the divine council, I would seek to be recognized by the chair. And being recognized by the chair, I would make this motion. Yes, I would move that the name of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. be added to this distinguished list. And that given his extraordinary witness, he be inducted as a standing member of the Great Hall of Faith with all rights, privileges appertaining thereunto. Anybody here want to second the motion? All in favor, let it be known by saying amen. amen. Those who really agree ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, let the record reflect and let the heavens agree that Martin Luther King Jr. is forever a member of the great hall of faith. He kept his eyes on the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Don't just call him a civil rights leader. He was a faith leader. 
His faith was the foundation upon which he did everything he did. You don't face down dogs and water hoses because you read Nietzsche or Niebuhr. You got to tap into that thing, that God he said he met anew in Montgomery when someone threatened to bomb his house and kill his wife and his new child. He said, you got to go, boy, and tap into that faith that they taught you about at Ebenezer Church. That faith that your daddy used to preach about. And by faith, he left the comfort of a pulpit and made the whole world his parish. By faith, he taught us to meet brute force with soul force, to harness indignation, to discipline, to protest with the creative weapon of love and nonviolence. By faith, he dreamed a dream for America until America could grow up enough to dream that same dream for itself. By faith, he led the struggle for civil rights until the law became an instrument a liberation and the walls of segregation came tumbling down. By faith, he fought for voting rights, and by faith, we must continue to fight for voting rights. <laughs> Yesterday would have been Martin Luther King Jr.'s 94th birthday. His beloved sister is here. She's 95. His big sister, let's hear for Christine King Farris. He died at age 39. The scripture, Hebrew says, all of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance, they greeted them. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Martin Luther King Jr. demonstrates that it's not how long you live, but how well you live. He left us a long time ago, but he speaks more powerfully from the crypt than most politicians speak on the floor of the United States Congress. Because of him, I am, I was born a year after Dr. King's death. But when I was born, Georgia was represented Congressman Williams by Georgia was represented by two senators, both of whom made their contributions, but they were arch segregationists, both of them. And one of them said, we love the Negro in his place, and his place is at the back door. Well, because of what Dr. King did and because of what you did five times, I now sit in his seat. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And so I just rise this morning to say to you, keep bending the arc. Keep standing up for voting rights. Keep standing up for health care. Keep standing up for our children. Keep bending the ark. And every now and then, God gives us a glimpse of glory. I mentioned that I sit in his seat. I'm glad you sent me to the office. But leadership is not about an office. It is about an orientation. Now, I wasn't about to sell my soul to get in office, and I'm not about to sell my soul to stay in office. I know who called me. I, 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 I've been fighting this fight long before the people of Georgia changed my name. I, I went to the United States Capitol in 2017. And they were passing the farm bill, that bill that helps farmers and agribusiness, but also supports citizens through nutrition and food security. 
And in 2017, they were cutting provisions that were desperately needed in the farm bill. The poorest of the poor who would just need enough food to, to subsist so that they can work and stay and engage. And they were cutting food, taking food out of the mouths of God's hungry children and cutting the children's health care program. And I went to the United States Capitol and I got arrested protesting the farm bill. Well, I now sit on the Agriculture Committee. This year I will help write the farm bill. It's not about an office, it's about an orientation. Wherever you are, whoever you are, do the work that God has called you to do and at the end of your life journey, whether it be 39 or 94 or 95 or 105, I just want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant, well done. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Congress must pass comprehensive immigration reform. We must pass voting rights. And the governor and the state legislature needs to get 600,000 Georgians out of the health care gap and expand Medicaid, expand Medicaid now. Keep bending the arc toward justice.